G'day, I'm Bob from Paradise and uh, I hope you can hear me because I put a new uh, microphone in my ear, that's what's sticking out of my ear. Um, we'll soon find out anyway. So today we're going to talk about uh, indoor plants and how they lift your spirits. But let's, let's start a bit with um, indoor plants. There's a myriad of them and some of the most popular in indoor plants and most of them are tropical plants, sub uh, tropical and subtropical plants so there's something um, that you need to know about tropical plants they need warmth and good light now I know that a lot of them grow in the uh, down in the rainforest where it's quite dark but you'll notice that they're all reaching for the light so plants need good light they need humidity especially these uh, tropical plants because I know a lot of people are growing them in cool places like Tassie Victoria um, and they're doing quite well with them so a lot of people have got the right idea that um, they need warmth and humidity and uh, fertilizer of course and usually I recommend three types of fertilizer a slow release fertilizer a liquid fertilizer which you apply quite often the slow release might last for six months and there's the um, liquid fertilizer you can give to a plant every um, few weeks like um, seaweed and fish emulsions those sort of things and there's a, another one which is really fantastic for plants and, and indoor plants. There's one we, um, we do actually um, sell from here. It's made in uh, Yandina. Um, it's a microbial fertilizer, which is great, great for plants. It's similar to um, worm vermicast, only not as messy and not smelly at all and you can apply it to indoor plants. So we recommend that. It's called Grow. Um, when, when we used, there was one year we we put a lot of worm vermicast on our fat plants and that year um, we got 10 times as many flowers right? and they flowered instead of just January they flower from January to June so that can be the effect of the microbial fertilizer it's pretty amazing um, from the flowering effect so so we need good light uh, we need fertilizer and we need a well-drained potting mix very important there's all sorts of concoctions coming out as, uh, from potting mixes, but all you need is a well-drained mix. You don't need you don't need these fantastic conco concoctions, but if you use them and they work, good on you. Fair enough. Um, we use one mix for all our plants, and it's very very well drained. I think I showed you last time um, that uh, if you've got a well-drained mix, you can grow just about anything in it. So, what what are the best indoor plants? Well, that's up to you because there's thousands of them. And keep in mind, as uh, nothing is really an indoor plant. You know, most of them come from rainforests and tropical areas, including Australia. And um, so, so there's no such thing as an indoor plant in reality. So you've got to try and mimic the, the best conditions you can. So it's a good idea um, not to leave your plant inside in dull light for too long. Um, to try and rotate it if you've got a balcony or patio or outside to rotate your plants around a little bit when the web is kind to the to the plant and there's adequate warmth. Um, so we've got a we have got a few plants here. Um, look at the alocasias. Now alocasias are great indoor plants to some degree. Okay, they like they like really good light. And this sort of plant, you can bring it inside for a little while and put, then put it out in the fascia. Good in a bathroom for a longer period. Depends entirely on, like some houses are lit up like a glass house these days, so you can keep a lot of stuff inside, or some people have grow lights and all this sort of thing. I personally love alocasias. Um, there's one called Alocasia wendy. I look at the structure in those leaves. Yep. And we've, there's another one here. Another, that's um, Alocasia yucatan princess. That's a, that's a really beauty. And uh, some allocations, they might die down in winter. You don't throw the plant out if it does. This, one's, uh, this one doesn't. This one might in really cold conditions. If it does, it'll come back up next year. Good idea to find a bit of rhizome, repot it, and it'll come up and grow. they grow really fast. Um, this is a philodendron squamiferum. Um, beautiful plant. Philodendrons, I think a lot of people know all about them, they're very popular 
um, these days, but they're not the only indoor plant. Um, but there's fantastic variety in, in philodendrons. Um, and, uh, you know, keep them, don't, um, with philodendrons, with nearly all indoor plants, because they are tropical, don't overpot the plant. The first temptation for a beginner especially is to get a, a small plant and put it in a great big pot and think you're going to have a great big plant. It doesn't work like that. So, so if you do that, if you do that even a pot, pot like this, put in the small, a, a small pot and just slowly pot it up. If you put a plant, say a, a plant this size, in a, a plant that's 60 centimetres wide, well, what you're going to do is drown the roots and it'll get, end up getting root rot. So, so most of them like to dry out between waterings a little bit so you see it dry on the surface just give it a, a top up um, the amount that you need to water varies with the conditions you've got the plant under so you you get the idea after all but just pot them up slowly don't put them in a great big pot because what happens you can see there's a certain amount of roots in that pot there this is the size pot that we send our plants out in there's a, there's a certain amount of roots and the roots has taken control of the potty mix and it's just got a nice um, it's got a nice um, ambience between between the plant the mix that it's in and the and the water right but if you put it in a great big pot it's going to be filled with water and there's not enough roots to take control of the of the moisture content in the pot so you're going to drown it that's why you don't over pot your plants um, okay why what is it about indoor plants not only indoor plants but why why um, what do indoor plants do for you? There's, there's certain cultures, like if you look at our Aboriginal culture, Indian cultures and a lot of Asian cultures, where certain plants have a very high regard in a spiritual sense. And that's, there's a good reason for that. And there's a good reason why plants lift your spirit. And, and the reason's pretty simple. If we go, go back into the um, start of, the, of um, evolution on our planet, the plants were created as under the as as part of the, the universe. There was there was no fear in the plants. You know? There was no stress. There was no pain. If they were evolved at the vibration of the universe. Now Albert Einstein, I'm sure you've all heard of him, said everything vibrates at a certain frequency. Well, there's a frequency of the universe, right? it's a certain vibration well plants evolved at that natural vibration and if you drop all all the fear out of yourself all the pain in your body you get back to your natural spirit and that's and that spirit that vibration is that same vibration of the universe the same vibration of the plants and that's when you go out with your plants or you walk in a forest that's what you feel it awakens your spirit right now if you happen to get into a uh, into a um, state where you've dropped all fear and, and you're in your natural spiritual um, feeling, and you get out with the plants as well, well then you get a you can get a real high because two frequencies come together and you get bang the amplitude builds up to something higher. So if you want to feel out of this world, that's what you do. But so that's how plants um, lift your spirits. Because you're going back into a natural vibration. So, nextly, we'll come down here. The great, everyone loves calatheas. Look at the colour in these ones. Don't try and buy one now because they, they're all sold now. But this one here, Calathea fasciata. That's a um, beautiful plant. And we've got several other calatheas here. The thing about calatheas, people say, right. My calathea has gone off. Well, they are with calatheas. They do go off a bit in the winter, and they'll come straight back in the spring. You can just cut them off, and they'll come come back again. So, calatheas, um, they like extra warmth. But if your calathea has gone off, don't give it an extra potting mix. They hate being wet and cold, like all tropical plants, but especially these. They don't like being wet and cold at the same time. And that means uh, over, don't give it too much water in the winter. Let them dry out a bit. So, um, next one, one of my favourites is this Peperomia. Um, I call it Peperomia Parallel. What do we call that? 
Parallel Peperomia. Parallel Peperomia. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look at the stripes on that. Yeah, you're fantastic. That's, that's another one. Peperomias are really easy um, to grow. There's a lot of different types. And uh, I think most people would know about peperomias and you know, just experiment away and, and try. I'll just show you. There's a couple of really nice ferns here that I, I um, passed. That's a microsorum phallax. Hardly anyone knows it, but that's that's a fern. I know we did ferns, but we only did a few. And uh, you can put these, if you look in there, it's on a really rise and builds up. You can have it in a pot and it'll just get bigger and bigger every year and hang right over. That's a microsorum phallax. There's another little one, an Australian rock fern. It's a pretty little thing. And over here, we've got a syningia. If you look in there, you can grow these inside on a um, shelf under bright light, but um, move them around. See, it builds up a bulb, and this is another syningia here. See how the bulb builds up and gets above the ground level? And then they are unreal plants. And I've got also we've got here that's a epipremnum, um, snow queen, and there's a um, really good indoor type of plant. And then there's a marble queen over here, see how it's marbled. Yeah, they're nice, nice plants too. We've got a catalogue coming out tonight, by the way. Have a look for it. <laughs> and that's a that's a variegated columnia, great indoor and patio uh, plant. It's a flower like that. These are just babies taking off. And if we come down a bit further, these are um, miniature um, watermelon peperomias. Um, we haven't started doing them. We're just propagating them. I guess everyone can hear everything. Okay. Okay. Come down here a bit further. This is a this is a great uh, indoor plant here. It's a uh, begonia rex. It comes in different um, colours. This one's not real spectacular, but they they just keep developing a rhizome up along there, and they can get about that big and look fantastic on a windowsill. And here's another little uh, peperomia there. An elbow, it's an elbow marginata. Great indoor plant. African violets. We keep selling out of those. Here's one in, we don't normally have them in, in flower, but look at that, stick that on a windowsill. And uh, collect, we get so many named varieties of these, it's not funny, but they just sell out so fast, it's hard to keep up with them. Um, this is a Maranta, it's got uh, plenty of colour. You can just come in on that one. Let's see, I'll just come down a little bit further. I can't sort of describe everything, but you just can, this is this is in tonight's um, catalogue. Um, that's a philodendron subastatum. Yeah, quite a pretty thing. Nice and red underneath. Nice shape. Um, another great indoor plant. This is the Anthurium. Very popular. This is one called Paris Black. Mm. With anthuriums especially, don't get them too wet. They like being dry, a bit like um, Hoyas. Um, and then you can give them, well, don't let them dry right out naturally, but they don't mind it. They can handle it for a couple of weeks. And uh, then give them, a, give them a good drink that way, but don't, definitely don't overwater them. Um, okay, come down here a bit further. Oh, yeah. This is a polybotra, peperomia polybotra. Look at the structure in that. Very, very pretty there in tonight's catalogue. And what have we got here? Philodendron lichens. These are, these are really popular. Philodendron birkin. Very, very popular indoor plant as well. We've got some uh, watermelon uh, peperomias coming on too. Now, um, we've got a competition going this week. So uh, Dylan's got the Facebook winner generator going and looks like he's come up with a winner. So 
here it is Jennifer Reed from Grafton in New South Wales. Jennifer Reed, congratulations, one of our customers. Woohoo! From Grafton, New South Wales. Mm -hmm. Okay, congratulations, Jennifer. I'll just hold it there for a second so you can see. If you missed out, bad luck, you might have to buy some. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. Oh, oh well, another, Hoyas are really popular these days. We're going to actually do a special on the Hoyas um, one day, but um, they're a plant that like pretty good light. We've got, this is one that's one you. We just saw this obscure flowering. Look at that. All the way, oops, I dropped those flowers off, but anyway, it's coming up. In the clock. It's a, not obscure, sorry, Obervada, it's a Hoya Obervada. Yep. And, uh, oh, this, here's a couple of Hoyas, might as well show you while we're here. This, sometimes you get a, um, a silver variegation on Hoyas. Here's some of our Obervadas with silver that we're building up the numbers in. And the other day we've we've now found a couple of diversifolias. Look at this. With silver variegation. So in a few years we'll be we'll have some of those for sale. And another good house plant is back up here. I think I walked right past it. Yeah, is our philodendron white knight. They're very popular. Look at the the colour in the stems, which is um, really nice, a bit of an odd shape that one, but uh, it's a very popular plant. So that's basically our oh, what is it? Oh, yeah, showed the end for you. That's basically our topic for today. Um, if you um, go to our website, that'd be appreciated. Have a have a look around. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Thank you.